Chuggalos, welcome back to day 14 of the Brew Crew Podcast, Advent Calendar 2023. And boy, do we have a polarizing beer on tap for you guys today. As, as I was getting ready, there's just a bunch of coincidences that happened with this beer today. And I'm, I don't want to shake it up too much, but this is Brassier du Buisson uh, Cuvée de, des Trolls. So it's a product of Belgian, as you can tell by Brasier. We'll get, we'll get into that a little bit. But the reason why this beer is so polarizing is uh, I've had two individuals that have drank it before me that I know of. Well, three technically, but two of them warned me that the beer exploded on them. And it's not like they were shaking it up. So Belgians typically carbonated. Uh, the, the one, uh, Chuggalo Mikey was saying it was all over his keyboard, completely ruined his keyboard. I might be on the hook for a keyboard. Uh, and that's a pretty expensive keyboard because I kind of feel guilty about it. Uh, so I pass it out to the other Chuggalos. So if you get to this before you get to the beer, um, I, I, I apologize. Uh, hopefully it doesn't uh, cause too much of an issue. There's other people I think that have uh, had it and have mentioned it. We'll get into that in just a second, but nothing. So we're going we're gonna to go with the crack. I'm, I'm set up for disaster here. I got paper towel. I don't normally keep paper towel at my computer. I know you weirdos think I do. And then I've got uh, another towel right here. So I'm just going to crack it. Use Richard. Try to appease the beer gods. Okay. Just cracking it slow. Oh, it's starting to come up a little bit. Oh, it is. It is coming up quite a bit. Okay. So we're just going to be deliberate. Oh, my goodness. It is. And I'm not shaking it. The interesting thing, so I'm going to be right there. So I'm wondering if it is overcarbonated, and this is. So I'm glad I told people, and I kind of deployed to people. I ch deployed to uh, Ch Chuggalo JT, obviously, and Chuggalo Stev, and Stev can talk to the Chunkle, and we got Sphil in that group, and oh my, it, you. I don't know if you can hear it, but here I'll try to get down. It's an angry beer. It's like that line. Yeah, it is It is getting all over. And I'm thirsty too. Good thing I have a lot to talk about today and I have a lot more on tap for the next few days. Um, I know we're going to do a big group thing. I don't know if JT's mentioned it, but we're going to do a big group thing coming up here on the 17th, which was the heavy hitter, the beer that we picked, uh, forecasted to be the, the creme de la creme of the advent calendar. All right. Good thing I'm doing laundry tomorrow. All right. It is. Look at that. That's that's just that's not shaking it up, folks. That's just that's just carbonation. You can see all that action right here. God, I love when I have a video like that. And it just it's I'm a paper towel wouldn't have done this justice. So I'm glad that I've got this. I don't want to lose. Most of it. I think I've got it under control there. So again, that that slow crack helped that out, and I want to thank the 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 tip that I got on this beer because otherwise I would have just cracked it. It would have been like a couple days ago, where I wasn't where I wasn't prepared and it got all over. This just on a towel, and we're gonna be good to go. All right, and thank you, Chuggalos, for those of you reaching out. Um, any any sort of like improvements that you want to see or whatever, we are very receptive. Uh, we can be taught. I know there's a there was a couple of comments on the audio issues that we were having. That's awesome. Please please let us know. We're here to make as big of a quality product as we can. All right. Okay. So on to this. <clears throat> Sorry, Stacy. This is gonna be this is gonna be a very uh, gassy episode um, as far as the carbonation. So um, with it being it's and it's a seven percent Belgian pale ale so uh interesting it's going to be an interesting take um you think of like uh, more of like a vit beer or something with the belgians it's got that thinner profile um that that european bottle it's not the thicker one um and again 11.2 that's that very euro bottle so it's not quite a 12 ounce but it's just it's a smaller um, you know, it, you can grip it a little bit more bottle than just the 12 ounce. And I know it's only 0.8. It's not, it, it's a, not even a full fluid ounce off of what a normal, normal American beer is. But, uh, 
And again, it says, is the delicious blonde ale with clean aroma that has a delicate hint of citrus. I totally get that. And a nice malt body and a crisp finish. Okay, so now that the, the gases have been released, I do get the citrus, that, that clean, um, you know, a lot of uh, natural soaps or whatever have like a citrus peel, be it lemon or orange or whatever, like not the zest, but the oil from the peel. Um, as they use as kind of like the natural fragrance in those. And I definitely get that from this. You don't get, not the soap, but like just the, that clean, simple, um, very um, recognizable citrus note. Yeah, bleeding off the carbonation definitely helped a little bit. I mean, just look at, look at that. It's just after a couple of drinks, it's still just agitated. So... Um, I would definitely go with uh, my peers on this one and agree that this beer is definitely overcarbonated. Um, I'm just wondering uh, if that is a signature of this beer, uh, a characteristic, or just happens to be this batch. Of course, all 16 bottles across the calendar are probably going to come from the same batch. But uh, let's go. Let's let's go learn a little bit from the. Uh, I could have done, you know, I forgot. I could have done um, uh, the when the beer exploded. My layout, so if you guys know, like I, if I pause, my layout for the stream deck when I record from uh, the man cave is different from the bar because I'm using two different PCs. So that's why the little bit of a hesitation. All right, let's go check out the website. And uh, it... Again, I already clicked on it. It said, you know, are you 18? I like I like that little, that subtle zoom. Hopefully you guys are seeing that. I think that's pretty neat. Um, let me let me just try to get it all in the same screen for you guys, and I'll close out the distraction of me in the background. All right. So, and again, so they're, they're, they're out of Belgium and was founded in 1769. Wow. Before we were even a country over here in the good old USA. And 250 years later, our story is still being written. Brewing 100% natural beers. Very, that's a very Belgian characteristic. And if you go to discover this story. The interesting thing when I was kind of looking at this. So 1769. I like the timelines. And then they keep it short and sweet. You know, there's there's a lot of family here. You know, obviously, uh, Dubissin is the. The, the, the brewery, as you notice, decided to give up farming and devote himself to, even though it started in 1769, then it was taken over by that family. The Scaldus beer. And then this is what I'm guessing the Cuvée de Trolls is their signature. It's their flagship beer. Um, anytime you Google this brewery, and again, apologies uh, for ruining the pronunciation. As JT told me on the mothership on the uh, episode 258, I was ruining Coco Vesa. Uh, it said it on the can. Sometimes it's value to read the can. I still like Coco Vesa. So again, so they started making this 23rd year of this beer and all the history behind it, which is awesome. Maturation in oak barrels. So that's carrying over there. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, Stacy. And, uh, Peach, so peach beers, um, very, you know, the fruit in the low countries, the, you know, uh, with a lot of the lambic beers or whatever, those um, seasonal or harvestable fruit are a big signature of the low countries. Anyways, I like that. So if you want to check that out, uh, Dubissin, D-U-B-U-I-S-S-O-N.com, and it defaults to the country you're from. So the fun thing, and I brought up the untapped. So again, a Belgian blonde uh, on the bottle. It has Belgian pale ale, so one and the same. 7%, so a little bit bigger than what you would expect for a Belgian. This is one of uh, global recent. I notice I'm not logged in. Um, I will. I, I want to talk about that in just a second. But um, this is, uh, I'm not trying to dox, dox my friend by any, but this is a, um, uh, a calendar participant. So I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. I mean, it's an hour ago, but I know some friends were having it really early into the day. Just uh, they got some stuff coming out. But that's cool. And I sent her a picture and said, hey. And she just happened to give it a uh, three out of five. So awesome. All right, we'll go. We'll, we'll bring back up my ugly mug. Okay. 
So it's calmed down a little bit, which is nice. Again, great commentary on Untap for those people that don't make videos, but have a lot to say and are containerizing their words very shortly. Um, uh, Team Smoke Show didn't make a video for this. She already made a video for Nectar Protector, which is our beer coming up on tap tomorrow. Um, and she said this one was, quote, not too bad. So thanks. Thanks for that concise review, uh, Team Smoke Show. Um, I'm, I'm with it. I like uh, this doesn't have that Eastern European, like, Czech pills funk to it, but it's got, you know, a little bit of a, you know, because Heineken comes from, you know, the Netherlands, Belgium, the low countries. This is, besides exploding on two different people, and again, had I not gotten that tip, it would have exploded on me, as you guys all saw. It took me a minute and a half to crack this beer. This beer isn't bad. Um, I um, am pleasantly surprised. I came into this one uh, again, with a little bit of the baggage, and it only went up from there. Uh, a beer that's been uh, carefully crafted over 23 years, so this is probably one of the oldest ones outside of Ritter Guts, uh, the Goza um, that's been made for centuries. Um, this is going to be probably one of the longer ones that we've had where it's not aged, but granted, they make it every year, and they have a variant. I guess I would guess that this doesn't depart too much um, on various variants. So, um, hmm. off the top rope, I'm going to give this a 375. Uh, I like I like the uniqueness of it. I uh, would like to have this in my fridge uh, to hand out to people as a departure from things that they would typically expect to be in my fridge. And every once in a while, this would be a palate cleanser or an off ramp or a departure from my normal lane of travel when it comes to uh, when it comes to having a beer. Um, I I like that the citrus comes through a little bit as a West Coast guy that drinks a lot of citrus in his. Um, that I, when you say nice malt body, does that just mean it's present uh, when it's descriptive on there and a crisp finish? I agree with that. It's just the uh, um, decisive end of the enjoyment of it on your palate. And it goes relatively quick. Yeah. Um, not a daily drinker, but in every once in a while. And uh, I'm very comfortable with that being at a 375. All right. Things that we've got on the future. So in the last two days, I've gotten uh, everyone's end of year wrap-ups are coming, be it Spotify or YouTube or um, it, in this case, Untapped. So I've got my year in review for Untapped coming up. I will try to log in, or I will log in and see if it comes up. On, I know it's come up on my phone, and I haven't looked at it yet. So it might be a nice thing to do. Uh, <coughs> sorry, Stacy. Uh, real time with you, the Chuggalos, and do it during one of my daily events because it's not really fair to do it on the mothership. One, because we don't have the multimedia, and two, uh, JT doesn't really have anything to add to it um, because he doesn't check in his beers. And then the other the other one is uh, Untapped just did their uh, bre Brewers of the Year. So I think last year Treehouse was in the top three. I still haven't had a Treehouse. They're, they're the next um, sought-after one, you know, without um, going to uh, like Drizzly or the beer advertisements or, what, or the, the, the beer secondhand sellers online because there's ways to get that stuff. It's just... I guess I'm more of an organic pursuer of that stuff, uh, even though I, you know, pay for the Reserve Society for the brewery, which I'm really excited for. I think that that closes 2024's Reserve Society closes here in the next couple of days. So if you're vacillating um, whether or not to pick that up, uh, you only got a couple of days to do it. Uh, yeah, almost done with this one. You know, I I, I sit and I try. Usually I write a lot of notes and, you know, things I'm going to go through. And I have on the couple of motherships when uh, JT was otherwise uh, otherwise uh, occupied. And those carried, you know, 30, 35 minutes. And those were those felt like super organic, but I was I had a hit list. This I just, you know, try to keep the beats down and have something to converse about the whole time. And I, I know I am keep putting stuff on tap or whatever, but uh, I just... Just uh, really excited. Again, it's the last day that I have for, of work for the year. I don't go back till January 2nd. So hopefully I have a little bit more time to 
uh, you know, sit down, ruminate on a few things, uh, clean up, clean up. I was just uh, reflecting, cleaning up this room a little bit. Maybe, maybe organizing the cellar. I just keep been putting stuff in there. I, I should go through and organize it a little bit more. But uh, yeah, it's Thursday, Thursday, as we used to call it in college. Man, those were the days. We weren't drinking stuff like this, though. But I hope wherever you are, this finds you well, and you're able to find a cold one and tip it back. Cheers. <laughs>